Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise. It's The Cube, covering IBM Edge 2015, brought to you by IBM. Hi everybody, welcome back to day two at IBM Edge in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Stu and I are really pleased to have Judith Hurwitz here to help us do the open today. Judith is the president of Hurwitz Associates, a long time industry analyst. Judith, always great to see you. Nice to see you Thanks too. Thanks very much for coming on, and uh, I said to you earlier, hey, uh, you know, I'm surprised to see you at the hardware show, and you know what, it's not so much of a hardware show here, Edge, anymore, is it? Hardware ain't what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, we had a chance to see the keynotes this, this morning. Um, uh, I, I was in there for the strategy session. Uh, a, a gentleman from Walmart was talking about their, their infrastructure. It was good to get a, a view from the boiler room. You know? And then of course, Inhi Chow Sa uh, gave a great overview of analytics. Very heartfelt story, you know, personal story about what goes on in, the, in hospitals. Uh, and then of course there was a discussion on crowdsourcing. The keynotes are actually still going on, we, we broke free, but Judith, what, what's your sense of the, the tone of this conference? How is IBM, this sort of former hardware group, doing? Um, I think it's, what, what's interesting to me is the bringing together of the, capabil the underlying capabilities of the hardware, which has always been very strong, very compelling, with the supporting software, and you bring those two together and it really is a very, um, very interesting uh, revelation, because you know you think about something like security, what, you know think think about a hospital, the level of security you need to have if you have sensors going off everywhere. Well, in a lot of the you know if you look at the power platform and the Z platform, there is security built in at the core in the hardware platform itself. So bringing those together and unifying them in a sense really is very transformative. And if if you go out and you buy pieces of hardware and pieces of, of infrastructure software and you mesh them together, you don't get the same level of unification and seamlessness and scalability that, that you get when when there's, it's, it's really sort of capability by design. So you know, uh, organizations are important, organi organizational structures, and especially for these big companies. Stu, you were at EMC, and they're, they're constantly shuffling the deck chairs, and sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. Judith, we've seen IBM reorganize a number of times. Ginny just made some, some major moves several months ago. And I think IBM's still trying to figure it out, right? There's still some changes. When changes happen up top, it doesn't automatically happen you know, throughout the organization, especially the size of IBM. But what do you think of the new organization? You've got sort of the, the old hardware group, but it's got middleware in there. It's got you know, the t pieces of Tivoli um, that have been brought over, so hardware and software together. There's a separate analytics group under Picciano. There's a whole separate Watson's group. There's a cloud group. There's, there's parts of the services business that remain intact. Do you think Ginny's got it right, and, and why or why not? Um, I, I do think she has it right, because if, if you think about technology, where does hardware start and software begin? So you look at something like um, uh, Internet of Things. There's obviously a lot of hardware sensors and uh, mechanical devices, but, but that's not the important part of that. It's the data that comes out of that. So how do you neatly make a distinction between, okay, this is hardware, this is software, this is analytics, this is data. So I think it is the right move, and I think bringing these elements to, to, together, unifying them, because for example, can you talk about data without talking about security? Can you talk about Internet of Things without looking at hardware and speed and performance? All of these things are related to each other. You know, in, in the real world with real customers, they don't think in silos. It was interesting, the gentleman from Walmart who was speaking at the keynote today said, that Sam Walton had a quote, he used to say that people thought that we succeeded and grew because we put big stores in small towns. And no, what we did is we replaced inventory with information. And so, so infrastructure matters is sort of a theme of, of IBM. 
Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, so, so Dave, to comment on the Walmart was a great case study because you know they're a big Z user. Uh, you know, we, we really think about technologies we've been talking about. You know, last year we talked about IBM taking x86 and pushing to Lenovo. And many of us thought, well, okay, IBM's just going to use commodity x86 servers. Well, no, there's power, there's Z, and Walmart was saying they're getting, you know, much better performance. I think it was like 5x performance, and the big thing for them was reliability. They said building things off of the x86 just wasn't going to give them what they needed. Uh, you know, Z was what delivers for them what they need for, I mean, a global retail that just deals with massive amounts of data. Uh, and you know, Linux fits into all of it, and even containers. Talk about you know, containers on top of Z-Linux, uh, power with little Endian and what they're doing, containers fits into there. Um, I'm excited to go into some of the middleware discussion today, but uh, you know, we were talking in the wrap up last night about have some of these big trends of you know, cloud and big data, do those make some of IBM's old portfolio go away, and I come out of this show saying that you know, IBM's well aware in positioning all their portfolio to take advantage of all of the new things that we're talking about. So there was, I mean, obviously a lot of talk and emphasis on power, Judith, we were talking off camera. We, we, I think we're all impressed with, with open power. It certainly exceeded my expectations, just in terms of the momentum, the number of, of, of partners that they signed up, but the, seemingly the number of partners of substance. One of the things that IBM seems to be messaging is that Intel closed, they don't use, they don't set, talk about Intel, the other, you know, we all know they're talking about Intel, sort of closed, uh, they will eat away at the value chain and the, in the, in the ecosystem, you know, we're open and we're bringing in, in partners. What are your thoughts on that? I know you're not a hardware person, but you, there's certainly a lot of software going on in an ecosystem. Yeah. Is that a significant advantage? I, I actually think what, what I would hear from customers and partners before the Open Power um, uh, Foundation is, there was a perception that Intel is the open platform, even to the uh, effect of saying um, Intel is open source, yeah. and and IBM is not. And can IBM really have the financial resources to keep innovating on power when we know all of these companies participating with Intel will continue to innovate? And that was the argument. Right. So you have the Open Power Foundation that turns that argument on its head. So I think it's the right thing. I wish they had done it a few years earlier, but it, it now, it, it, char it starts to change the conversation. Well, it is kind of a judo move, isn't it? Where it Intel was perceived as open, and now all of a sudden, <laughs> I'm saying, oh no, they're, they're closed or open. I want to talk about innovation. Speaking of Intel, the, the industry has marched to the cadence of Moore's Law for decades doubling you know, transistor density every 18 months, doubling performance, and now we know that unnatural acts are occurring to keep that curve alive. Um, many people feel as though that when you get down to you know, whatever, five nanometers, you're going to hit the laws of physics, and that's not going to continue, but the interesting thing is, and Stu, you and I have spent some time with the professors at MIT who talk about this notion of the next wave of innovation is going to come from combining technology, so the examples are, Ways, the self-driving car, Watson. This is an area of your wheelhouse, Judith. You've recently written a book on cognitive computing. Um, what are your thoughts on innovation going forward? Where's the innovation going to come from? Um, clearly you're seeing combinations of technologies. What's exciting you? So a couple of different things. One, one is, the, is the data element of this. So what does cognitive computing do? What does it do? It, it allows you to gather more and more data and apply machine learning to start looking at the patterns and the anomalies to start learning from that data. We have traditionally done, created software that was, okay, this is our process, this is what we're trying to do, we're building something, but we're also always building based on our problem from six months ago. And we, we finally get it built two to three years later, we have built something based on the world that we knew two or three years ago. The, the real interesting aspect of cognitive computing is because you're letting the data drive you towards a solution rather than letting your assumptions about the world three years ago lead you to build something. So I think it's totally going to transform the way we build solutions. Will, will Dr. Watson replace Dr. Welby? <laughs> um, Dr. Watson will be a great collaborator with Dr. Welby. <laughs> I think they'll work together <laughs> quite nicely. The other, the other thing that, that I see happening 
is is that uh, infrastructure, cloud, whatever you want to say it, the, the, the real power is in bringing all these elements together and it's how you manage all of this as though it were one unified environment. In the past, you know, you had your system and you put software on it, that was your environment. We are moving to a world where all of the above has to work together as though it is that one integrated system that we had 30 years ago, but now it's, it's all done with, with software and embedded software within hardware. Hardware is, is different than it was a few years ago. Machines have always, you know, since the Industrial Revolution, replaced humans, um, largely with labor tasks. Machines are starting to replace humans with with cognitive tasks. You go to an airport, you're talking to a kiosk, you drive down the highway, you don't see people up there putting you know, billboards up anymore. It's you know, all electronic. Um, are you concerned, particularly, about the middle class? Uh, me median income has dropped you know, since 1999 in this country from 55,000 to 50,000. We're seeing computers replace human for cognitive tasks. Is that a concern that we should? Well, I, I think we, we have yeah. to rethink jobs. Um, I think you know there are there are plenty of areas where people can't hire people fast enough, where they can't find the people. So there needs to be mentoring. There needs to be education in in the new areas. We've always had this since the beginning of time. So I, I think there's a lot of work that we as as professionals have to do to get a new generation ready for the tasks that are going to be needed. All right, Stu, we'll give you the last word. What should we be looking for today? You know, impressions of day two? What should we expect? So, uh, you know, f filling out, as IBM's been consolidating some of the portfolio, Dave, you know, digging into, you know, more of the storage. And I tell you, day one, we did a lot of the Z uh, and uh, the, the, the main, fr the, the, the power, power piece. Um, today, we're going to have Eric Herzog on, always a dynamic guest on the program. Um, you know, Spectrum has been one of the buzzes that I've been hearing talking about, uh, you know, what's happening on there, uh, digging the middleware pieces. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's really, this is kind of the bottom layer of the full stack that IBM's building. So I, I know we see Judith usually at Insight. That's kind of from the application side. And you know, keep asking. You know, we've got as the stack puts together. It, it's these lower layer pieces, which storage, you know, never gets commoditized, and is one of the biggest challenges under there. Uh, you know, Power Z and that hardware piece is, is the foundational layer that we're going to build everything on top of. All right, Judah, thanks so much for coming on, Stu, Thank appreciate you. it. Uh, what's next for you, where are you headed? You going to be at Vision next week? Or? Um, actually, next week I'm going to be at Dimension Data, okay. looking at what they're doing in cloud, um, then uh, heading to Dell, see what they're up to. <laughs> lots so, going on in the springtime here. All right, again, thanks for you guys for coming on to kick this off. Keep right there, everybody, we're live. This is theCUBE from IBM Edge 2015, we'll be right back. <laughs>